Okay, once again, good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Ashley Boyd. I am the Communication and Inclusion Supervisor with the Calgary County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And first, I'd like to just go over a few things with you before we get started and I introduce you to our panelists. As a participant in this webinar, you will not be visible to others. I repeat, you will not be visible to others. Only the name that you have provided Zoom will be visible. All participants have been muted for the purpose of this webinar. If you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged. Um, at that time, once you're acknowledged, I will unmute you and you will be able to speak freely. Um, I do ask that you please save questions until the end of the presentation. Um, participants may use the Q&A feature um, and we will try our best to answer all of those questions received through Q&A. Um, please know some of your questions may be answered later in the presentation, so we ask that you please be patient. Also, we value your feedback. So if you register for the webinar this evening, you will receive all, you will receive all shared supplemental information via email, along with a link to a brief electronic survey later this week. So we ask that you please take two to three minutes to complete the survey because we want to hear from you uh, about all of our presentations and the job that we're doing. So now without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to today's panelists for our Planning Seeds of Knowledge webinar entitled IT equals Independence plus Technology. So today we have joining us Assistive Technology Specialist Julia Wood, John Blair, and Michael Moltz. We also have Behavior Curriculum Intervention Specialist Cindy McLau. McLaw, excuse me, and Andrea Ramirez. And we also have joining us today, Special Instructions Manager Kelly Rainey. So I just wanna welcome all of you all today and thank you for joining us. Um, starting us off today will be Julia Wolf. So I'm gonna stop the share on my screen and Julia, you can go ahead and take it away. Uh, the rest of the panelists, feel free to turn off your cameras until it's time for you to present. Thank you so much and enjoy everyone. All right, hello there. Like Dasha said, I'm Julia Wolf. I'm one of our three assistive technology specialists, um, Mike Moltz and Sid Blair, who you'll see shortly um, to, in the middle of this um, presentation today. Um, today we're gonna give you um, a tour of the, the new website that just launched today. It is a virtual um, tour of our custom living environment. Um, we also are going to um, show you the newest member of our team, our Omni Telepresence robot. Ashley will be providing you with a link to our website. Um, and but right now, just so you so you know, I did put it. And it is in the chat, so you will have a link if you want to go through there as well. So let's go ahead and look at that website together. All right, so as you can see, um, it's, it's custom living environment, virtual tour. Um, you will find it in that link I provided with you. Um, you can also put in in the um, search bar, um, assistive technology, and this will come up. Um, right now, we're gonna start off with a very short video to give you an idea of how um, the, the tour works. Welcome to Cuyahoga DD's custom living environment virtual tour. The Custom Living Environment, or CLE, is a smart apartment demo developed in 2019 that showcases many assistive technology tools that can be used in a person's home to increase independence. It allows individuals to touch and try equipment and devices in a home-like setting. This virtual tour allows you to see the CLE at your own pace and learn more about the items that pique your interest. Each room in the CLE has its own product list. Within each room, there is a list of items containing a link to a video of Cuyahoga DD staff demonstrating the product, as well as a link to more information about the product. Many of the items featured in the CLE are available for trial to eligible individuals from our lending library. For more information, visit CuyahogaBDD.org slash CLE virtual tour. Well, really what happened was we just we found out during COVID, like everyone else, that, hey, sometimes you just can't do things in person. So we wanted to make sure that people still had an opportunity to see our custom living environment. Um, and people today might not be able to come and see the CLE, even though we are doing live tours, 
Um, maybe there's a um, transportation issue, or maybe they can't get staffing together. Um, but this will give you an idea to how to at least stop and look and see what we have to offer, and then call one of our assistive technology specialists or one of your therapists, and we will be able to help you know more about these products. So let's dive in a little deeper into our um, website here. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is each one of the rooms has its very own link. So you can choose a different room to go into, and then once we're in there, I'll show you what happens. So let's go first to the kitchen. So the kitchen has an awful lot of items in it. Um, we have a listing of what the items are, so you can click on that to see what's going on. Um, just watch a short video for that. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the bottom um, to the very last one so that you can see Mike Motes featuring our cook stuff. Um, Hello, so we're here in the kitchen, and one of the things that is most important when we're in the kitchen is worrying about safety. So, for instance, we have a typical um, electric stove, and I'm going to turn the heat on, and so this burner, you know, we'll see is going to get hot, it's going to get red. And one of the concerns that we have is for people who uh, may get distracted, right, they'll walk away for the phone, walk away for the TV, the door, um, whatever, and then they will leave the area and they will forget that they were in the kitchen. So what we have here, this is a cook stop, is what this is called. And as you had seen, it had a green uh, for go cook light on it, meaning it was okay to cook, it was okay to turn. What you also didn't really notice is that there's a, uh, a timer that is going on right now. So once I turned the oven on, the timer started. This device is a motion detector. As long as I'm here in front of the kitchen or in front of the stove in the kitchen, the timer is fine. Now, if I were to leave the kitchen and go elsewhere, the motion detector would realize that nothing is happening, and then the timer starts. So we have it here set down for 30 seconds. Uh, you can have it set for a minute, two minutes, five minutes, whatever you know is, is appropriate. But once I leave and the motion detector detects that nobody's in the kitchen, the timer starts. It'll go down to 20 seconds, 10 seconds, and then finally at zero, the electricity to the stove cuts off. So the burner gets cool again, and also this stop button will turn red, uh, signifying that the electricity has been turned off. So that's just one of the many videos you'll see here in our kitchen. So what's really nice about this website is when you scroll back up, um, maybe you saw something in the video of the, the cook stuff, like maybe the, um, the microwave, and then you can pick the microwave to watch. You can watch them as many times as you want to. But when you get back up to the top, you can search, click right here, and that will allow you to immediately go back to the home page, which allows you then to see all the different rooms again. Um, this time, let's go to the bathroom and see what we can see there. So in the bathroom, obviously, there's so many different things that we have. Um, one of the things I want to show you today is our new, one of the newer items we have, which is the electric toothbrush. And I'm going to let Jody Shashker show you that. The auto brush is the latest innovation in dental technology. With three-in-one cleaning, gum therapy, and whitening, it is safe and effective. The auto brush has an antibacterial silicone brush head that can be suited for all ages. With 30,000 vibrations per minute, it is a dental-grade effective clean for everyone. This kid version is easy and fun to use with a song that plays until the child is finished. The base gives it a nice place to sit and is rechargeable. Not only available in kids, but also in adults with different sizes available for every size mouth. So that's just one of the things that you'd find in, our, in the bathroom. Um, once again, we're gonna scroll back up here to here, to click here, and again, one of the things that we discussed today is possibly coming new because this is, again, today is the very first day that it's been live for everyone to see. So you guys are on the cutting edge of, of, of what we have offering to you. Um, we have, um, what we talked about possibly if you saw something and didn't know what room it was in, that we're going to try to see if we can do a search engine. That might be something coming new to, to as well. But right now, I want to show something specifically that you probably wouldn't be able to find because it's in our entryway. And that is the um, Watch Finder 3. So I'm going to show Sid Blair showing off that video. And again, these are quick, short videos just to give you an idea of what we have to offer. 
This is the WatchMinder 3, and it's a reminder device and also a watch. It's worn on the wrist, and it has a subtle vibration when the reminders appear. If you have an individual, for example, who might be working at a job, and they're used to their supervisor telling them, great job or nice work, you could actually program some ap affirmations into the watch itself that they would see, and they could go off every 30 minutes, for example. And when they see that affirmation, they would know they were doing a good job, because it would be reminding them of that. So if we scroll through the watch itself, here are just a few of the reminders we programmed in. There's You Rock, there's Sweet, and there's Wow. And each one of these would pop up every 30 minutes for that individual and would give them that affirmation that they need to do their job correctly. So there you go. That's our new website, our new page in the website of CuyahogaBDD.org. Um, again, this is a, a cursor to maybe having an actual tour in live. But again, if for some reason you can't come, come and do it live and you still wanted to have something done more intimately, we can certainly show you how to do it through the use of the robot. So I am going to stop my sharing and I'm going to hand it over to Mike and Sid who are going to show you how our robot would help with those virtual tours of the CLE. Take care, everyone. Okay, I'm going to start out with showing you just the actual um, Omni robot itself. So, and then Mike will show you how uh, you can control it. So this is the Omni telepresence robot. It's four foot, uh, 10 inches high. It weighs about 20 pounds. Uh, it can go up to a maximum speed of 2.2 miles. So it's like a brisk walk. And on a full charge, it can go for about six hours. So Mike, I'm gonna let you take over and control the robot and we'll see. Okay. Yes, thank you. So, uh, yeah, I'm Mike, and the way we uh, have it, I'm in, I'm in William Pat Day also, and just to kind of coordinate this, it is awkward if we have some feedback problems or connectivity problems. Um, and this isn't normal. I mean, we don't normally Zoom the robot, right? The robot is designed to be by itself. So anyway, I am sitting here in front of my iPhone. There it is. And um, I've received a link. So again, if you wanted to receive a um, a tour, you know, via the robot, we would send you a link, and you would come to this page, and hopefully we get to the CLE. I know this is too small, but you know, we'll, we'll click there, and then it gives us hints and say, "Are you ready?" Yes. Okay. Be careful when adjusting the neck, right? Because we don't want where that tablet is. We don't want that to be broken. Be careful when backing up because we don't want to run over anything. Uh, and then, yeah, we don't want to hit anything, any walls. We don't want to, when the carpet changes to the flooring, we want to be uh, you know, aware of that bump and we don't want to have it in a hot environment. So I'm going to log in now and access my microphone and my camera. And the, there we go. So now I have a picture, I'm going to get closer. So there's, I'm facing Sid. This is me, and also in the, it is hard to see. I'm going to zoom in. That's actually where the, uh, that's the ground. That's like facing directly downward, and it's showing me where the wheels are, so I can, um, I can, I can not hit anything. So I'm going to come this way, and so you see how I'm, I'm kind of next to a couch, and, whoops, I know that. Yeah, and I don't want to hit it, so I, I'm watching on my, my screen here. It, it, this takes a little bit of practice, um, and I'm going to walk, I'm going to go into the bedroom. And again, in real life, one of us um, assistive tech people would be guiding you, so we would kind of walk you through it and, and tell you, hopefully, if you can manage these, um, how to direct it, or again, we can kind of come to you and, and help guide if, if this control issue is, is a problem. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna navigate this way, and I'm gonna sit, yeah, I'll let Sid talk for a while so you can get his screen. Okay, yeah, so Sid, why don't you? Okay. 
And I believe if it's on speaker view, then um, on your PC, then you'll be able to see exactly who's speaking at the present time. So uh, for those of you who want to see the larger picture, uh, adjust your Zoom to speakers view, if that helps. Okay. It's going to turn around a little bit more. And as you can see here, this is our bubble wall that we have in the sensory area of our bedroom here. And one of the neat functions is it can change to different colors. You can go from red, green, blue. And even has a function on it where you can have it just rotate through the colors. Uh, it's a very calming effect for an individual. Uh, if they're having a difficult day, they could come into their room here go into the sensory area and just kind of enjoy the uh, bubble wall. Okay. So again, on there, you know, you kind of heard a little bit of feedback. Um, but again, that wouldn't happen in normal life, right? That wouldn't, uh, if it's just me and the robot, then we don't get the Zoom feedback. So that's, uh, that's how that works. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to the kitchen now. I'm going to do the Amazon dot and so I'm going to walk through. Yes, yeah, Sid. Why don't you why don't you start talking, Sid, so you can get the so so your screen can 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 show. Maybe you can't hear me. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> ah. Okay. Okay, Mike's going to come over here in the kitchen, and he is actually going to go to your Amazon Echo Show that we have located here in the kitchen. And he's going to show you how using the robot, you could actually communicate just like you would if you were actually in the uh, CLE yourself. Mike, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. So you may want to unmute. I'm not quite sure. Oh, you know what? I did mute myself. I apologize. Okay, let me try this again. Great. For a mic? Okay. Mike is going to show you the remaining procedure. One, take out the trash. Go ahead. Press the There we go. Okay. So, yeah, I apologize for that. I, I was muted. Um, yeah, so I went up there and I just said, um, Alexa, what are my chores today? So that's one of the uh, commands that we have, you know, programmed into our into our device. So uh, for Sid. Come back soon. Okay, whatever. Okay, but there we go. So that's uh, that's just going to Alexa, and I'm going to back up and I'm going to just I'm going to dock. So I'm going to. Um, I'm going to get it back on its charger because it needs to be charged. So I'm going to wander through here again. And, and again, so this is where the, you know, and again, I don't know if you can, you can really tell, but I'm on the flooring and I'm about to go over a bump um, to the carpet. And so I, I just want to kind of pay attention to that. There that is. There that is. And, oh. There's the garbage can. I may be able to tell it to open. Let's see. Open can. There we go. To the left of the can is a Roomba. And to the left of the Roomba is the charging station. So I can tell when I'm done on my controls here, there's a thing called auto dock. I'll click auto dock. And now the Omni robot is finding the charger and it's going to steer itself 
onto the charger. And, uh, and then that's all we need to do. So we really never need to touch the robot. Um, it is quite light. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, like I say, only 20 pounds isn't a lot for the size it is. And um, it's almost there. And there it goes, docked successfully. So I get an award there. So anyway, um, that's how the Omni robot works. And yeah, and, and again, like we're hoping to, and then I'll just hang up. I mean, for me to finish it, I'll click hang up. And now we're done with that. How was my experience? It was good. You're welcome. So that's the Omni robot. And again, the intention is, you know, if you wanted to schedule a, a tour, you, you do it the same way, uh, you know, there's an online form for it. And it goes to uh, our folks here and you can ask for in person and it gets one of, you know, the three of us or whomever, or we know at, at some point we're going to have to, you can ask for a robot. And then again, either one of us will coordinate with you. We can either come to your house and help you navigate through it with a robot, or we can be in the CLE if you can manage the robot and um, and coordinate it that way. Mike, we do have a question. Um, so Je Jeannie wants to know, or Jeanne, excuse me, um, wants to know, please give some examples of when the robot would be used. Is it more flexible or complete remote monitor? Is it a more flexible or complete remote monitoring option? That's an excellent question. And I think this is so new that we're still exploring things like that. Uh, again, for us, yeah, that's the question. I mean, so for us personally, we got it to offer remote tours for the CLA, right? That's why we personally, you know, got it. In another life, why would another person get this? Another person could get this possibly for, for remote monitoring. Uh, those of you, you know, familiar with remote monitoring, you have the, the cameras on the walls or you have a, a, a tablet on the wall. This could be a tablet on a robot and which can then move and, and navigate. So I think it would be up to the remote monitoring company to kind of introduce a robot or, you know, have that as an option. Uh, and again, other other ways that it's been used, um, you know, if the robot is at a school or at a, uh, you know, place of work and a, a person could monitor, could remote into it and then travel to school. I mean, there's a commercial out there about a remote um, a kid who's, who's in school remotely and he's traveling the robot. He's in, he's in his house, but he's, he's zooming through the, through the robot as the robot moves through the hallways. So those are, those are real life examples. And, uh, and to be frank, yeah, I think it's, it's still so new. We're still, you know, exploring that, what it can be used for in the future. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Okay. Hey, um, Really quick here, it looks like we have a, a, a hand raise here. If it's specifically related to um, what we've just seen here today, we'll go ahead and take this question. But first, uh, maybe they lowered the hand raise because I no longer see it anymore. So, um, okay, let's see here. It's back up. Give me one minute. Okay, um, Kevin, go ahead. Unmute yourself, please. Okay, thank you. First of all, hello, um, Mike and hello, Kevin, Ashley. Um, about the bot for you to, you know, kind of um tell me what to what to do. Can you just like um do it do it on your phone? Um, for example, I I I have there I have the Rain doorbell system, and I can. I can t I can talk without going out going outside. Um, mm -hmm. Does it work with the with the with the robot the robot? Yeah, yes, it does. Yes, and again, okay. it's it's awkward, you know, because we're zooming with the the robot, you know, um, you know, so that really doesn't give you the full appreciation of how it, you know, it, it's awkward. But um, yes, in real life, if you were on one end, just like the Ring doorbell, that's a great example because it's got the camera. And it's got the the audio, and all this is is a moving green ring doorbell, where you can talk. Right, I can talk back, and uh, of course I can see you. That's the other thing. So this is different than the ring. 
because I can see you. I can see what you're presenting on the camera, and, and you obviously can see me, or you can see Sid, who's in the CLE, and he will show you this device or he'll show you that device. Um, yeah, but that's a good example. Uh, and yes, you'll, you'll be able to interact. We'll, you and the person leading will be able to interact uh, pr pretty nicely. And also, I was going to add one of the great things about the um, Omni robot is it doesn't use an app. It only uses a web portal. So as long as you have a web browser, you can just go to the Omni uh, link in the web browser, and then you can control it from there. Unlike some of the other robots we looked at, you had to actually put an app on your phone. Some of them only had uh, apps for, for Apple. Some had for Apple and Android. But with the Omni, it kind of eliminates that, that hurdle. You can basically do it anywhere. You can get to a web browser. You'll be able to control the robot from there. Thank you, Sid. Um, we have one more question. Um, go ahead, Tina. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hi, um, I'm Kevin's mom. <laughs> and um, I was very interested in this too. This looked very um, usable for him if for some modifications. Um, do you think down the road there would be a chance that there would be some kind of like tray or basket? He's in a wheelchair and he's just trying to get things like to the kitchen sink or to get something out of the refrigerator, you know, to eat or that's been a struggle of ours, you know, if there was some kind of something that he could, you know, put that on there and then have it take it to the other room for him, I think would be fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, and somehow this robot would have to know which drawer to pull, right? Things like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's not the... Yeah, this particular robot is mostly for, you know, the, the presence, right? The, um, uh, it's not a service robot. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a service robot. And I'll bet you those... Well, no, I'm sorry. I don't oh, mean for, him, for it to, like, take things out of the refrigerator, but for him to get it and put it on there and then take it to whatever room he needs it to go to. Oh. You know, yeah. Yeah. Does um, that make sense? It does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, it's, they're, they're, you know, I, we've tried yeah, a cart system, into. but it's yeah. a little awkward for him. So with trying to push and push his chair and push that, he's got to push it forward. And so I'm, I'm just thinking of a other applications for that. And that really okay. piqued my interest. Well, yeah, keep thinking like that. Yeah, because I think, that there, yeah, because obviously, yeah, because you control this, obviously, with, you know, your, your phone, you know, forward, back, left, right. And, and, and what, so what you're looking for isn't necessarily a, yeah, you're just mostly looking for a transport type of thing. And, and it's something to explore, that's for sure. Okay, thank you. All right. So up next, um, we have our special instruction manager, Kelly Rainey, who's going to share some video with us. Is that correct, Kelly? Yes, uh, Audrey and Cindy are going to share the videos. Okay. Okay, great. Welcome, Audrey and Cindy. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, everyone. Um, Yes, we'll start with our first video, which is a good introduction to our what our department has been trialing out. It's called Florio. It is a virtual reality um, that's linked to specific lessons that, that Florio has created. And the video will just give you some more background information about it. So we'll start with our first video. We also have a second video that uh, Florio has created to present to you for this evening. Um, Audrey and I might stop here and there to give you some more information intermittently throughout. And then at the end, we both have some examples and success stories of, of us starting to trial out this equipment with some of our clients on our caseload. So I will first share the first video.
And I, let me check and make sure, actually, before I open it, I didn't have share sound clicked. I must have. So there we go. Then I think for this class, you're going to be in the Lego room. Hi. Have a seat. Hey, can you find who made that sound? So many of my students tell me that their mind is so disconnected from their body that they wish they could leave their body behind. In the world of virtual reality, suddenly you have a child who feels empowered, who feels that they have some control over their world. That's a whole different experience from the real world for people with autism. They're controlling everything. They're in charge. We have gone through lots of different headsets to figure out the best one. So this is actually a consumer launch Oculus. This one had a nice form factor for kids. This is Vijay. He's the CEO of a virtual reality company called Florio. Hence all the headsets in his basement. I'm also a dad. We have two kids, an eight and a four-year-old. And our son is on the autism spectrum. As parents of a child with autism, you're always looking for those moments where you find healthy engagement with something. Is that where your pretend house is? Yeah. Manoj has a deep interest in maps and navigation. It's Ocean City. We call him our human GPS. Ocean City, Maryland. <laughs> Manoj makes you look at the world in a whole new way. Like he notices things that I don't notice. It, it's, it's right. Look at that. In late 2015, Google Street View became available as a virtual reality application. Now it's satellite mode! It is satellite mode. I had a virtual reality headset, and I was really curious to see whether he would enjoy it or not. Come over here, put it on. He tried on the headset, and he loved it. Vibba was the one who then made the connection as like, what if VR could be used as a medium for coaching skills and eventually if you could prove it out, be therapy. What I've learned is that the autistic brain has neurological differences that can present different strengths and challenges. Our idea is that in VR, it's in 3D space. It involves the same kinds of navigation challenges and communication challenges and that practice is just more useful and more applicable. Generally, people with autism tend to have difficulty communicating with others and focusing in group settings. So Vibba and Vijay created a company and started to make VR lessons that could build communication skills. Florio's lessons work on elements of a very important foundational skill called joint attention. Joint attention is the ability for two people to establish shared focus on the same object. It's a pretty important social skill that many people with autism tend to struggle with. What Vijay and Vibha needed to prove is that VR could actually help children with autism build those types of skills, and they needed a partner to help them do it. Get your class, young man. This is Celebrate the Children, a special needs school in northern New Jersey. And like most schools, they're trying to find innovative ways to use technology to help their students. They can then bring so much more to those face-to-face, real-life interactions to be able to express their ideas, to feel more in control and less anxious. Many of the students at Celebrate the Children have more severe forms of autism than Manoj. A lot are nonverbal, so even basic communication is a really big challenge. This is Max. He has limited language skills, and he often struggles with using joint attention in the classroom. When Florio decided to pilot their program at Celebrate the Children, they wanted to find out if their VR tools could help kids like Max build skills like joint attention. Okay, so Max, how are you feeling today? Okay, so you're going to put this on. Sure you're okay with your glasses, right? All right, there we are. Keep looking around. <laughs> you found the chimp, great job, awesome. Okay, let's see what else. Is that a bird squawking? Great job, you found it, first try. 
All right, I'll take it. Thank you. Great work, Max. Did you enjoy Florio today? Yeah. Great. Good work. Bye. Bye. Unbelievable. It was incredible. I'm impressed. Processing language and accessing his language is very difficult for him. And that's where the anxiety comes down, the confidence comes up, and the motivation to come back and keep doing this. And Max isn't the only student who participated in Florio's program. Perfect. We measure several different dimensions of the skill joint attention, and 10 of the 12 kids showed clear improvements in that skill. And these were older kids who had more moderate to severe autism. Florio is busy building more advanced training situations in virtual reality. Can I talk to you a moment? Yes. This is Manoj beta testing the latest one, a police safety simulation. The police safety module is part of an NIH study in partnership with Children's Hospital of Philadelphia's Center for Autism Research. Florio started building the police safety module after an incident in 2016 where police approached an autistic man who wandered from his group home. The incident resulted in his caretaker being shot by the police. We basically started building content to simulate what it would be like to have an unexpected encounter with law enforcement and start being exposed to some of the language that the officers would use in that interaction. All right, you're free to go. These children are intelligent. It's not a matter of an intellectual disability. It's more how the information is coming in and their inability to organize that information. Keep looking. There is this transferal between enjoying an activity in the digital space to then building skills and applying it to the real world. And if you can then build on that, you can then take their engagement to new levels of relationship with finding new ways of play and enjoyment, relationship with their parents. It just opens their world up more. You're muted, Cindy. There we go. <laughs> um, our second video, which Audrey is getting uh, up for us now, it's actually by two women from Florio. They'll introduce themselves. They'll give you some more examples of some of the lessons that Florio has developed. And um, we, we might stop this in between this video to give you some more information also. So, And, and just real quick, Florio is still kind of in its early stages. And so we have really been fortunate to be able to partner with them, pilot this with some of our students and their families, because we meet with Florio like every other month to give them feedback um, on some of what our families and our students are looking for or things that we you know, come across that they might not have come across mm -hmm. in other uh, testing environments. So this this is uh, the individuals that we actually meet with every other month. Hey everyone, I'm Heather and I do community Community Development for Florio. Joining me is Rita. She is our Director of Therapy Content and she's also a speech language pathologist. And we're here to introduce you to Florio. Take it away. So there are three pieces of equipment that you'll be using when you use Florio. The first is a mobile VR headset. This particular headset opens up like this and an iPhone goes inside of it. Together, the headset and the iPhone make up the learner's immersive experience. That's how they'll see and interact with the different Florio lessons. And something that makes us different from other VR experiences is that we also stream the lesson in real time directly to the coach's device, which is an iPad. So the coach can always see exactly what the learner is looking at at any given time. And the coach also plays a role in guiding and facilitating the lesson, giving the learner feedback throughout the experience, and we've tried to make it as easy as possible for almost anyone to act as the coach. 
We're going to give you a sneak peek at our upcoming grocery store environment, which is not publicly available yet, um, but will be soon. And I'm going to screen share my iPad and show it to you. Um, this is the coach's view on the iPad. This is what the coach would be able to see while the learner was experiencing VR. Those two bright green lines that you see on the top part of the screen there show you exactly where the learner is looking at any given time. We give some extra visibility to the coach outside of those green lines to make it easier for them to act as the coach. Um, the blue banner in the center of the screen is also only visible here on the iPad. That blue banner is a tool that we use to give the coach some suggested dialogue and some suggested wording that they can use throughout the different lessons. And then down there at the bottom in that gray area, that is the coach's dashboard, and there will be some different buttons and tools for the coach to use throughout the different lessons. So I'm going to start the lesson, and Rita, why don't you tell us what we can expect from the grocery store when it's available? So the grocery store, uh, this is our first uh, foray into into the grocery store um, has a lot of different items on the shelf and we're starting by introducing people to the grocery store asking them to to travel to specific areas within the grocery store uh, discover what's in that particular area perhaps consider what uh, else might you find in that particular area and then also know what the name of the area is so Florio is a virtual reality teaching tool designed to help people work on social communication, behavior, and daily living skills. The original set of Florio lessons were developed with autism in mind, so they focus on lessons to address social communication, both verbal and nonverbal, um, sensory needs and mindfulness, uh, as well as uh, activities of daily living. And we recently launched content to address executive functioning skills. We use virtual reality as the medium because the immersive nature of the experience has this unique ability to engage and retain the attention of the, the users. Virtual reality allows us to use real scenes but introduce visual and audio supports. So for example, if you want a learner to remember to stay within a crosswalk while crossing the street, we can animate a stripe on the ground that that cues the learner to uh, to the crosswalk. At the same time, we can remove distractions from the environment that can get in the way of a learner's progress. Moreover, we can pace the lesson to meet the learner's needs. So if someone needs help with a social interaction, we can stage the interaction and pause the scene to allow for explanation. The VR experience is monitored and driven by a coach who can provide the learner who's wearing the headset with feedback in the midst of the experience and the learner can repeat the lesson so they can achieve success and gain mastery. So we're going to pause at this section. Um, this gives a little more insight into that law enforcement interaction uh, that they discussed on the first video. This uh, actually shows kind of the actual time, and there is a considerable wait time um, built into the program to allow for processing, to allow for prompts. Um, one thing that you can't really tell from this particular video that is a wonderful um, aspect of using Florio is that we can shut down the number of background noises and background, um, just all of the kind of sensory things that could be distracting to an individual. That, you know, if you actually took them onto, you know, the middle of public square, you have no way to control all those outside um, influences, the sounds, the smells, the, the sights. But in Florio, you can actually eliminate it at first and allow the individual to just get used to the social interaction, the back and forth of the conversation. Then slowly as they progress, you can add in a little bit of background noise, a little more background noise, cars going by, more people walking down the street. So this first, what you're gonna see right now is really kind of bare bones. 
there's not that a lot of background information. It's just the interaction with the law enforcement. Cindy, did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say, so you can see in like the orange colored boxes, it's giving you some additional, as the coach, you can, you can press any one of those and you could say, I need more information. And, and the police officer would ask in a different way or ask it again. Um, you could have the police officer say, did you hear me? So it's giving you as the coach, some of those prompts. And if they answer correctly, then you will go into, you know, the, the green box for the next question. So you're seeing, you know, the police officer stating the question. We're waiting for, you know, the learner to respond. It does give you throughout all of these lessons a lot of those other questions or other ways to answer in the orange area. Um, and then you can move it at the pace of how you feel that learner is. Um, progressing. And so it kind of, each um, scenario, each lesson scenario has levels to it. So, you know, the first time, like I said, you might have more prompts within the scenario and less background distractions. Um, and then maybe by the fourth or the fifth time the student goes through you can, you, you're adding those things in and they need less prompts. So there's room for growth and room for them to continue to practice as they grow. Can you say that again? I need more information. And can you tell me your street address? And what's your date of birth? All right, you're free to go. So that's the end of the video, um, but I know both Cindy and I had some information, some stories to share with you about some of our students. I'll let Cindy go first. So um, when we started this, what you should know is each child has their own avatar. When you've started with a new learner, so you'll create an avatar and you can name the avatar what you would like and it'll keep track every time I come back to that, um, to that learner, it'll tell me, you know, we've done these lessons and we can actually go online now and see which lessons we've completed. Um, we haven't quite reached a data collection piece of it yet, but this is all still progressing. So, um, but we are able to keep track of that. So one of my little students that I started with, he's a four-year-old little boy um, who has ADHD, and he has a lot of difficulty with holding joint attention, listening to directions, one and two-step directions, um, keeping his body emotionally regulated so that he can hear the directions. So I thought this might be just a great experience to see how this works and how much we can progress through, through some of these um, difficulties that he's having. So we started with, and, and I guess I can give you guys just 
some uh, list of the skills that you can work on. I know they kind of went through some of them, but communicative eye gaze, there's 11 lessons in that section. Um, you meet some animals, you may be asked what sound, you know, what animal made that sound. You may want to watch where that animal went. So you have to focus and follow that animal. Um, there's, like I said, there's 11 different things in there. Lots of safari, like examples, lessons in there. There's looking and finding 180 degrees, 360 degrees. Um, there's some winter finding, looking for things. Another skill that they have is community and daily living. There's 16 lessons within that area. So you saw the, the police officers. Um, it will build, like Audrea said, on more information. So the first few are telling your information. Um, there's one where it's in the evening, and like Audrea said, there's more and more background noise and distractions added to it. Um, there is crosswalks, working on pushing a button, following the crosswalk, looking on the other side, watching the signs, um, checking for cars, looking both ways. Uh, there is, let's see, choosing, so those jaywalking, don't follow the jaywalker, so that's another community and daily lesson. There's descriptive language, so we work on facial concepts like up and down or in and out or left and right, where is the train, so you have to watch and um, follow the train. There is emotional regulation, 14 lessons in that watching the train, there's a xylophone, there's a marimba, there's hanging out in the aquarium, finding a fish, there's a crystal cave, there's snowfall. Um, the train is also within the emotional regulation. They're, they've just added some yoga poses. I have not gotten to those yet, but um, there is also some guided meditation and guided focus for body relaxation. There are five lessons in focusing. So it's finding the animal, following the animal, uh, quickly follow a point, some more focusing on yoga instructions. And then there is a nice one about um, important information about masks. And we may be going back to that more often again. So it shows like how when you cough, the germs, how they um, spread throughout a classroom and how the difference is if we put a max, mask on the um, decreased amount of germs that are spread within your classroom. So that's a nice visual on how that um, can help a student understand. There is imitation, nine lessons in imitation. So, you know, being a copy hero, being an echo hero. Um, there is infrequent events, two lessons in here. There's trick or treating. So it shows you walking up to a door, you pressing a doorbell, someone saying trick or treat, you responding, um, or you saying trick or treat, and them responding with putting some candy into your, into your um, bucket. So that's a real relevant in our uh, almost October month. There is airport security check, which I, I did with a few of my students when they were traveling over the summer. So that's a really nice one to see going through TSA asking what, you know, they're going to ask you questions. What's your name? Um, you know, wait for you to give your, give your ID and going through the line through the security. Um, there is school and social situations. There's 43 lessons within this one. So there's friendly greetings, unfriendly greetings, greetings through a hallway, greetings in a cafeteria, um, you know, finding a group to sit with, being able to welcome a friend to your group, um, which they do through all of these, like low traffic and high traffic. So again, like Audrey said, we can increase and build on those skills and add more traffic. There's getting ready for class, finding a seat in the classroom, a lot of great things within that social school and social skills. And then the last one is understanding and using gestures. So there's 10 lessons within that one. Um, there's a gesture game, you know, whose turn is it to push the animal, 
stop and go with the animals, class participation, inviting a peer to sit. So a lot of those gestures come here, sit down, push, and using all those within the lessons. Um, so that gives you a little bit more information on, on what lessons they have. But as Audrey said, they're continuously building on and you know, even before I had even asked about the airport security, I had come back to say something to them about airport security, and they were already on the ball and working on one and had gotten it out right away. Um, so that came in handy for a lot of my students. Um, the two kiddos that I've really been working on, like I said, is my little four-year-old. And so we did a lot of the, the lessons within keeping um, – lessons in responding to auditory information. So it was finding a giraffe and staying focused on the giraffe and then finding the monkey and seeing what the monkey did. And he would go up and down and, you know, make some funny noises. And then we had to find the bird. So he had to look all around and he really had to slow down a lot of his motions because he's got these on and he's going back and forth as quick as lightning. And and he wasn't even finding the bird because he was going so quickly. So it was really nice to see from our first lesson with Florio to, I would say, we've probably done six or seven lessons to see him slow down, to see him understand that I need, you know, to listen to the directions. Because as it built, you had to, you had to watch the girl, Emma, give the, the, give the instruction. And she would count one two, three, now go look for the monkey. It wasn't like, where's the monkey? We're really working additionally on more ways to wait and listen to the directions. Um, we were able to like decrease the, decrease the amount of verbal prompting that I did in the beginning. So I saw that decrease as we went along, staying on task, as I said, slowing down, being able to work on those lessons and crossing the street. Um, Mom was really concerned because he's very impulsive in his in his actions. So he would get to a street and he would want to run across the street. And we were able to practice and practice and practice every time I came out. And he is now looking left and right and left again. And we added even more distractions, like an elephant pops up in the middle of crossing the street. And he's like, why is that elephant across the street? So we've had to say, you're in the crosswalk. Like, watch what you're doing. Watch the hand, it still says go, it doesn't say stop, hurry up, you got to move quicker, and it'll tell you all of those things throughout the lessons. Um, and the last one, he just, he wanted to work on a policeman one, so he had picked that one, and um, he did a really nice job answering the policeman's questions. I thought it was pretty cute, like, he, the policeman had said, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm sitting here playing this game, you know, <laughs> like, but we had to say, like, immerse yourself, you know, you're, you're walking down the street, you know, this is what you're doing. And he was able to use his dog tags, too, when the police officer said, what's your name, what's your address, what's your phone number, like, he had to take the VR equipment off, but he looked down and he said, this is my phone number. So we added those supports and modifications to the lesson also. So I've been really happy to see how much he's been progressing throughout our lessons. Um, my second example was a middle school boy that um, is, he's nonverbal and uh, he has autism. So the first time that, um, I mean, he, 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 he does have a few words. I shouldn't say he's nonverbal, but he does have a few words that, that he will say. So the first time I brought out Florio, he put it up to his, his face and he like smiled and was saying cheese. Like it was, it was a camera and he, you know, we really had to slowly shape him to be able to handle the goggles on him because he didn't want them on him. He wanted to flip them right off. And, um, you know, he, he did that my first, first session with him. He probably flipped them on and off like that six or seven times and would say cheese and then put them down really quickly. So um, I had to rethink, like, what kind of things is he really interested in and how can I get him to engage a little bit more with this equipment? And he loves music. So I went to the emotional reg regulation sessions and there is, um, like we said, the xylophone and the marimba and 
basically those are just putting it on you'll see the the piano the, the xylophone and the marimba in front of you and as you turn left and right it'll make like the sounds of the music you'll be looking and it'll go do 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 and so he would only do that for a few seconds but he kept it on and we didn't strap it on we just kept it up to our face and he would turn left and right a few times and then take him off so we did that a few times during our session we got a little bit longer at the end of those sessions um but it still was very quick and and so we just had to stay at his level let him guide us to see how long he would keep the, the goggles on. Um, we've probably done about five lessons. And now towards our last lesson that we just had, he was able to do the animals. And he kept them on the whole, I'd say he kept them on for 15, 18 minutes, which I was pleasantly surprised with. And he was able to find the animals. He listened to the auditory instructions to find the monkey, find the giraffe, find the elephant. Um, and he stayed regulated. And I saw such a progression from our first time that we, in, you know, brought in the Florio to this last visit where we were able to work on some real lessons with him. Um, I think those were, you know, and even like with him, the verbal reminders decreased. Um, he was able to listen more to Emma. There's a girl, Emma, within here who, who has a lot of the directions. I didn't need to press, you know, to ask the question again. Um, what is nice, which I saw in the video again, is that most of those kids are in a swivel chair, which a lot of times when you're in the home, you don't have that as an option. We might be sitting on the floor. We might be sitting on the couch. And that is really nice because I had to physically prompt him at times to turn right or to turn left to find a giraffe or to find an elephant or to see the whole area around him because it goes, you know, 360 degrees. Um, so, but I, I, Gloria has done wonders for both of these kids that I have worked with. Um, I can only see, you know, as we continue the progression that uh, I know they can both make while working with this equipment. So thank you. I will hand it over to Audrea and um, go ahead. Thank you. So I think um, one of the big things that I do want to re reiterate that Cindy had kind of brought up is that there, there is still a learning curve, right? There is still that idea that we have to meet our students where they are. As educators, we, we want them to show us where they are, we're going to meet them, and then we're going to help them grow. So there may still be shaping when it comes to just even getting, you know, the headset on. And like Cindy said, going from, you know, flipping it on and off without it even being over his head to being able to wear it for a whole 18 minutes or so is fantastic progress. Um, and I think the fact that we can control some of the distractions within the Florio program really helps those kiddos because it removes some of that anxiety. Um, for me, I think one of the most impressive things about using Florio is that it gives families um, some really practical perspective of where their child's skill level actually is, um, whether it's putting on the equipment itself or interacting in some of the scenarios. And because those distractions are reduced, once the kiddo is comfortable in the headset, it allows a new avenue of interaction between that child and their adult that they may not get in the real world because in the real world, we cannot eliminate those distractions. So for one of my kiddos, She's 10 years old. Um, she doesn't have very much verbal language. She uses a communication device. Um, but within Florio, she was able to practice the back and forth of conversation with her parents, which her parents were incredibly excited about, right? And there's not as much of the distractions because her view is just what's happening inside that headset, right? It's, it's almost like it gives us a little bridge um, into the minds of our kiddos and they, and they can bridge out to us. 
Um, so that is incredibly impressive. And I, I really like the opportunity that gives for parents to get that new perspective with their kiddo. Um, this particular little girl, she did really well with the yoga poses because it's already something that she was exposed to at school and um, at home. So having the headset and the yoga poses without any of those distractions was uh, an exercise in you know, regulating her body that she really took off with. It was something that was really positive for her. Um, my next student, and this is something that I think as an educator, I, it's common to run into when you get into that middle school, early high school age range especially nowadays when technology is so advanced and we have so many kiddos who get engaged in um, some very like realistic looking video games. So my next student, 13 years old. So in that middle school age range and initially his kind of knee jerk reaction was this is, you know, this is babyish. It's too juvenile, right? But he was still able to engage and we practiced the social settings at school. So being able to um, return a greeting from somebody, a peer who's, who's been friendly, being able to return a greeting to someone who hasn't been friendly, um, practicing what we say to someone who's actually being a bully. And so even though his knee jerk was, this isn't as cool as my video games, it still allowed us to practice the social skills that he really needs to practice with in a safe environment, right? There's, there's no reason to have any anxiety in this environment. You're safe in your home. You've got this headset on. And if you have to, you can say, you know, I'm done playing this right now. So, you know, even though that initial, like, this is kind of babyish was his reaction, and he actually ended up engaging and we worked through those social skills um, that he will need to practice in his um, school with his classmates and peers. Um, then lastly is actually um, a young man that one of our colleagues worked with. I um, mean, he was actually featured not too long ago as well as our colleague, Holly. And I wanted to share this story because he's a young adult. He's 22, he's gonna move from our school age services into you know adult services, but Florio has been something that he's been able to practice real world interactions in. Um, Holly has actually worked with him every two weeks on a regular schedule, and he's been able to not just get through each lesson, but get through the levels of each lesson, lesson and progress um, with that regular interaction. Um, everything from self-regulation to executive functioning to the, you know, the social pieces. So I think, you know, as we stated earlier, we're really fortunate that we're able to partner with Florio at this time, even when it's still in its early stages, um, because we are able to get feedback from our families and individuals, meet with Florio regularly, and, you know, we're right there finding the new applications um, because I think the potential for this type of technology for our students and their families is it's kind of limitless, you know. So that's all I have. Yeah, I know. Um, I think there was a question, Ashley, about um, are there plans for the for Cuyahoga um, DD to utilize? Can we get a Florio account? And right now we're just in the process of um, working with Florio and um, we right now there are, we are not able to purchase units or tech associated with the units at this time. Um, I'm not saying that we wouldn't be able to possibly in the future, but we're, we're right now just um, working with some of the students on our caseload if parents are linked with the Cuyahoga County Board and would like to trial something like this. Um, they, they could, I don't know if uh, Kelly is still on, but um, 
that she she is our supervisor, Kelly Rainey, and you would be able to put in a referral to one of us within whichever district you're in. And one of us, since we now have each have our own Floria, which is fantastic. We only had two within our department. So now all of us have one um, and we are able to come out and trial this and see how you know it works for each of those clients. Yes, and to speak to that, Cindy, um, we are again, yes, in our piloting stages of this program. Um, we're currently trying to work out funding resources to get this, um, you know, to purchase the equipment um, through different through different resources for families to have better access to it. So currently, our staff, the Behavior Curriculum Intervention Specialists, are utilizing it with their caseloads. Our plan is to eventually um, be able to lend equipment through our lending library to families and then eventually um, roll it out into um, you know the adult therapist world so that they could utilize it in the future um, so and of course working on funding resources to make it more affordable to families so that is all coming um, in the near future again this is so new um, but we do realize that a lot of families are interested and it's become very popular um, as a source to you know as another tool in the toolkit to help the students that we serve Thank you, Kelly. Do we have any other questions uh, about Florio or any of the other information that was shared uh, during today's presentation? Feel free to uh, uh, utilize the Q&A function at this time. Also, there was a question brought up about uh, tonight's recording. Uh, once the recording has been made available for distribution, I will follow up with all registered participants and send out the recording link. Um, so just for anyone who's wondering about tonight's um, presentation, again, once it's available, I will send out a follow-up email to include the link. Okay, um, it looks like we have a hand raised from our very own Lori Mago. Lori, uh, do you want just permission to talk or would you like for me to upgrade you here to the panelists? Well, I, I think talking's just fine. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Lori. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to circle back to um, some earlier questions relative to the telepresence robot. Um, so a, a few things. One is some of the early thoughts about um, ways to use this robot. Um, somebody had mentioned remote monitoring. And so if, if you're looking at kind of like a DIY remote monitoring system that you would put in place, which many families do um, before um, in lieu of going the route of purchasing a um, a remote monitoring package from a company or, you know, stepping their way up to that, the telepresence robot has, has or can be used, you know, for parents or caregivers to be there with their individual who is um, living independently. So, you know, you saw what Mike and Sid were doing. You could be on the other end of the robot with your phone following your individual to the kitchen, you know, to watch them cook. Um, you could sit, you know, uh, virtually sit across the table from them, eat your meals together, you at your house and them at theirs. And it's a way for you to navigate um, through their living environment and be able to have two-way communication and, and um, audio and visual. So those are some of the early thoughts about um, different ways to use telepresence robots in like a DIY remote monitoring setup. Um, in response to an earlier question relative to robots with arms, um, there is at least one telepresence robot that I know of um, that does have arms. If you can imagine um, kind of like that reacher gripper thing um, that you use, it looks very much like what you would imagine a robot arm looks like um, that can grip and carry things. Um, as you can imagine, we're, we're getting past just telepresence and moving slightly into service at that point. So somebody on the other end of the robot would be able to control what the arm does and what the arm lifts. Um, so there is that option as well. Um, but going back to um, what an earlier caller had said in their question, it makes me wonder if there aren't other adaptations that could be made to the type of robot that we have right now. So, you know, this is so new to us. We don't know what, um, we don't, we're not exactly sure what's possible at this moment, but just thinking out of the box, could we adapt something like what we have right now 
um, maybe with some uh, creative individuals, our friends over at CSU with the biomedical engineering department could help us adapt something and figure out a way to have a basic telepresence robot be able to actually carry something from one place to another as the earlier caller had asked. So just throwing those thoughts out there. So lots of possibilities. Thank you, Lori. Uh, we do have a question. Um, this is from Arlene. When behavioral specialists use this resource, is it just to test the device or use in for or you or do are you guys using it for a few lessons? So we are using it as our as part of our practice. So yes, we are uh, in a pilot stage as far as it goes, like Kelly was explaining, um, as far as we don't have it to lend out in our library yet. But as far as the BCIS team, we are using Florio as a tool in our toolbox um, when we, you know, work with families. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from our audience members today? As a reminder, I just want to let you know that um, later this week, you will receive a link um, with a brief survey. So we would ask that you please take a few minutes throughout your day to complete the survey. We want to hear from you. Uh, any ideas, suggestions, room for improvement? Um, we'd love to get that feedback from you so that we can uh, plan for next year. Um, and uh, I just want to thank all of our presenters today, Atria, Cindy, Mike, Sid, Kelly, um, Lori, Lori, thank you for hopping on and uh, sharing some additional information and insight with us. Um, I think it's been a real treat. I know that I've learned something today, a, a lot of different things today. Uh, didn't even know we were there. It's almost like watching the Jetsons for me now at this point, but it's all real life. So um, who would have thought we've come this far? So um, again, earlier today when I sent out the link, I sent the um, uh, well, I sent out the reminder email. It contained a lot of good resources for you all, several links to some of the videos that were shown today, um, as well as some additional resources. So please uh, take a look at that email that was sent out this morning. And it has all the information that was referenced today during today's presentation. And if we don't have any additional questions, um, I'd just like to once again thank all of our uh, presenters, all of our attendees tonight, and hopefully you guys will have a great rest of your evening. So thank you so much and have a good one. Thank you. Take care.